Okay, so this is just an introduction to the problem of pruning. It's a pretty widespread issue in uh, machine learning because we use so many huge models and it gets very cumbersome to run these over and over again. We want to get rid of as much noise and junk as we can so that we can be fast, especially in mobile networking uh, where you want to run something on a phone, for example. So our mentors actually use pruning for things like image classification on phones so that they can have something like an image classification fire for tumors or something where they can like take a photo on their phone and then immediately run a machine learning model. So um, that's kind of the background behind this. It's a very common problem. So uh, researchers at MIT made a uh, platform called Shrinkbench that allows you to compare your pruning method with other benchmarked uh, methods. So that's what you can see here. You can also see just like generally the problem of the trade-off between accuracy and pruning. So the more that you prune, obviously accuracy goes down. This is just like kind of a naive first pass to show you that trade-off, but obviously we try to make that trade-off less of an issue with our research. Um, here's just our general approach. We embed um, linear regressions into the common architecture of the pruning method so that we can have something more interpretable. We want something that's more interpretable so that we can say, like, these are the features that were most useful for our classifier. Um, these were the features that weren't useful so that we kind of have a good explainable machine learning model, another big problem in machine learning. Um, these are some of our results, which Jeremy just talked about. We wanted to highlight that, so these are five di different runs for our experiments, and we have these different features. So this one here, um, for example, so this is, is convolutional, um, is very highly useful as a feature, whereas something like reduced flops or floating point operations is pretty low across the board. So even though there's a very high number, like a high amount of variance in um, feature importance over the number of runs, there are some things that aren't as variable. So that can be an indicator of the ones that are very high, we keep, the ones that are consistently low, we throw out, and that can make for a more explainable model. So this is the demo of our proposed method. And what you can see here is that this is the real-time uh, reporting of our metrics and over the chaining episodes of the reinforcement learning framework. And so what you can see in the first one, blue one, is the reward that we have. And for the first 50 chaining episodes, it's actually collecting experience into the replay buffer. And after 50 chaining episodes, you can see um, the reward is going up a lot and much more stable. And the second one is the accuracy. So you can see the accuracy is also going up after 50 chaining episodes. And the compression rate is very stable in the 0 0.5, which is 50% of the model, which would set the hot threshold in order to make the model like don't prune like too much. And the reward you see here is a combination of the accuracy and the compression rate, which is, is okay. So. When you are during the in the warm up uh, period, so you are actually using the random action because you are exp doing the exploration, and after warm up, you are actually selecting the action based on your decision by your chain actors. So, yeah, so this is the result. So basically, you are like playing a game, and the the reward of the game is like how much. Um, parameters you can compress the mod in the model and how high accuracy you can get. So yeah, this is so much for the chaining episode. And here is some of the code of the environment. And I think the most essential part is this one. Uh, yeah, it's here. Like this is how we do the feature engineering and uh, select the feature that we, th we think is important. And then like every time if we got the best result, we will output the model. And that's how we use the result for the explainability. Yeah. And where's the result for the explainability? Is in another one. So you can see this is the chaining episode like a long time.
Oh yeah. So so this part is just like we are showing the model that we learned, which is from linear regression. So it's a explainable, interpretable model. So what you can see here, like the weights of the linear regression, is actually the feature importance, and. Yeah, this is the result like we read from the saved model.